Um, and we we're always looking for that line, I think. Uh, yeah. And uh, you know, to that end, you couldn't do all the, the stuff you wanted to do. At a certain point, you also had to impose story on it, and you also had to sort of take this woman on this journey, and you could have done a very long and very funny movie uh, just about those experiences, or just a camera on Kim telling those stories, because uh, it's, it's fantastic. Um, but uh, yeah, that was always a challenge, a fun challenge. We should have done it as a miniseries. <laughs> we should have, we should have <laughs> done it as a miniseries. Nine part miniseries, we blew it. Guys, we gotta go. <laughs> uh, and for you, Tina, was there a different sense? You've played real people before, obviously. Yes. Everybody knows about Sarah Palin. <laughs> uh, this was a little bit different. You're playing yes. a real person, a version of a person, right. but that you're interacting with. Yep. who's about an experience that is still unfolding. Mm -hmm. So how did that Im impact your performance? I mean, I, I, it, I, we, I wanted to make sure we got things as right as we could, but it's true, it's not really a, a biopic. I didn't, I didn't listen to tapes of Kim's voice, um, and, and we didn't like, you know, match our hair color and stuff. We didn't shoot me Lord of the Rings style so that I could look 5'10". <laughs> <laughs> I kind of wish we had done that. <laughs> So it was a, a different, it's not that pressure to be absolutely that person, but in the same way that you adapt the book, you have to adapt and try to find the spirit of that person or what you believe it to be, play that. And I know that you were careful about getting some of the details right. You shot, obviously not in Afghanistan, you shot in New Mexico, mm -hmm. but you had military personnel on set helping mm -hmm. you, you had some Afghan mm -hmm. advisors. Mm -hmm. Tell me about getting those details right. Yeah, I was, uh, it, you know, that was one of the reasons I knew Robert was the only person I trusted to, to adapt the book and that he, I knew he would be the most diligent person about trying to get all that stuff right because it's news business, it's military, it's Afghan culture, it's all these things. Um, and in spite of our best efforts, there definitely would be days where, like the one example I was at, I, I, I was having a, a first wardrobe fitting uh, for the movie, which by the way, greatest wardrobe of all time. <laughs> Blunt stones, khakis, like the greatest. I'll never have it so good. Black jacket. Black yeah. jacket, headscarf. Um, but uh, I just for fun, I said, Robert, I was like, oh, we're trying on my, my uh, bulletproof vest and whatever. And Robert was very nervous. He was like, uh, it just should say press on the vest. I was like, OK, it's I found it shouldn't say I that. It's, well, we'll get there. It's just, I'm just trying to have yeah. fun with you, Robert. I'll show you a picture. <laughs> and then so we had all the things made that press. And I wore them in the beginning of the movie. And then by the time Kim came to set well into the shoot, she yeah, said, oh, we would I'll never have worn that because uh, it made us an obvious target. Yeah. We'd never wear one that says press. And so like, definitely things The one she was wearing the, was still wrong. She was wearing like a big camo one. She like a full military one. I was still half right. But no, he so. wasn't because he didn't ask what scene it was for. It was for the scene early on. We'll, we'll, we'll sidebar this, Robert. Wow, let's go back and reshoot this. <laughs> it was the one that they this give me. Press tour is that the tearing military us apart. gives me in the beginning. Um, yeah. And so, and then we, like, we had a guy named Stag, who was our Air Force uh, advisor, who sometimes would say, like, you know, if you ask, like, just how would, if I ask this guy his name and rank, like, are we saying this right? Just right. double checking. Like, is this how he would say it? Is this where I would sit in the Jeep, you know, and just, just try and dot every I where we could. Have you ever had that kind of experience making film or TV before? Uh, no, not to this. No, I don't think so. Not to this level where it, it was so, like, those are the, the directors too, John and Glenn, the directors would sometimes say, like, and you guys want to improvise? And I'd be like, I can't improvise too much because I don't know what I'm talking about. Like, I can't, like, <laughs> I know, like, what I learned. It was like, <laughs> it was like running for president. Like, I've got what they told me. <laughs> Let's not go wide of that. So we didn't improvise too much. Um, John and Glenn, your directors told me that they, the way they like to shoot a movie is they ask everyone to shoot the scene as scripted. If it's a funny scene, it'll be funny. But they also ask for everyone to do it a dramatic version if it's a funny mm -hmm. and vice versa, which is not typical for most people. And um, Tina, tell me how that worked for you. Yeah, I don't remember them doing that, but I guess <laughs> <laughs> these are all the junket lies. Um, uh, I mean, we definitely would do different versions, and and uh, uh, and you would always you would always do the scripted version, then you'd have one kind of uh, where you could stray from the script. Which a lot of times just. Uh, a lot of times I find it just loosens the actors up and then when you go back to the scripted version for the next tape, take yours a little more alive. Uh, um, but yeah, I think they, they found that tone in the edit room that every scene had jokes in it and then it's some, as they edit, like sometimes you get later in the build of the movie and you go, okay, we don't want a joke here, so you kind of cut around things and that's, um, 
that's the director's job to really find and finish the tone of the movie. Yeah, the tone is very hard to, to pull off, that kind of combination of, of comedy and drama and sensitivity. Um, were you watching with them? Did you come in the edit room at any point? We would watch cuts. Uh, Lauren and I would watch cuts, and we shared them with Robert, certainly. Uh, um, the directors have a window of time to execute with theirs, their director's cut, in which no one can bother them. It's like a union rule. Uh, and then once they, they showed us their director's cut, and then we communicated with them, we gave notes. You know, I never set foot in the edit room, because that's, uh, that's their domain, and, and film is different from television. Film is a director's medium. But they were very collaborative with us, and, and so much of it was talking about, okay, we need to get the movie to a reasonable time, what will go and what will stay. And uh, you, you get past the sort of phantom limbs, uh, for lack of a better term, it's a terrible term to use for that, um, <laughs> of, of things that you missed that were, you know, that were once there. Um, uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Robert, you and Tina go way back. You worked together on 30 Rock right. and Kimmy Schmidt. And um, tell me a little bit about your working relationship, although I feel like we're getting a taste of it. <laughs> no, this is much more rancorous than it used to be. It's, it's, it's brought something out in us. Uh, and Saturday Night Live before that. I mean, we've, yeah, off yeah, it's, and on it's, it's really, it's 19 years, I think. I was thinking about it. Yeah. What are we going right. to do for our 20th? We're gonna, <laughs> you and I are going to Aruba. We're just going to. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be like a gift to the Magi. One of us I got return. an Aruba exploder <laughs> taking me to Aruba. <laughs> um, yeah, we first worked together. I was, I was uh, producing Weekend Update at, uh, at the, the Saturday Night Live program, and, and Tina started to be one of the anchors on Weekend Update. And you know, Saturday Night Live is a very competitive place, and you're kind of on your own day-to-day -day as a writer, and you make a little alliances, and it's all very Game of Thrones, and <laughs> Lauren sits back there with like a goblet. And... Um, <laughs> And, uh, but doing update, you're kind of guaranteed that 10 minutes every week, and it really changes the tone of, of what you're doing, because you're a group of, you know, we had, what, three writers, and uh -huh. me and you and Jimmy and mm -hmm. a little associate producer, and, and um, it wasn't little, uh, it was a <laughs> full-grown man. Um, <laughs> and we were all trying to accomplish, yeah, we wanted our jokes to be the ones that got in, but we were all trying to accomplish the same thing, had the same goal, and, and uh, that was sort of the first time we had worked closely together, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, some combination of that just worked. I think it's, maybe I'm a glutton for punishment and approval, and no, you no, like to withhold. A, it, no, <laughs> no, very warm. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that was that was when we first worked together, and then Robert uh, went away to work on the show Friends, and then when I uh, years later I was had written the pilot of Thirty Rock, and then asked him to come back and help for a few weeks. <laughs> He's been here for like eleven Ten years. years yeah. <laughs> Um, and so, obviously, you know each other's voices very well, right? I just have to know her voice, but uh, yeah. I think I so, think, yeah. Uh, I have not yet broken through as an actor, but um, <laughs> uh, I keep lurk. I try but to sneak it, When your shot. Dick Cavett biopic comes together, <laughs> the world will see. I just need see. to get the, the rights. <laughs> Mr. Cavett has not returned my calls. <laughs> uh, yes, I, mean, I think we have a, a great shorthand, and we share a sense of yeah. humor, and we share sure. a work ethic, and... and uh, uh, yeah, it's nice when you meet those people where it, it, it works. Um, I want to watch another clip. This is when you guys uh, have just arrived, or Tina's character has just arrived in. Asking this. No, sorry. Can I f your security guys? Oh, by all means. Don't just say that to be polite. No, I wouldn't. I'm not. It, Even Nick? That's No, that would never happen, so you're good. Hey, no, Kim, don't say that. You could have Nick. In Afghanistan, you're a serious piece of ass. Thank you. That, oh, that's nice. Because you're what? I mean, you're like seven, six, seven in New York? Here? Yeah. You were nine. Borderline ten. What are you here, like a 15? Yeah. Huh. I love it. My go. So this is also based in reality a little bit. <laughs> Seeing my six or seven. No. <laughs> the idea of being a cobble cute is something that um, you know your your status changes. When yeah, you yeah, go no, I, and, I, and I didn't write it as dialogue in in the in the book. I just sort of made the observation because we all knew it. Like, you know, you'd go to Afghanistan and you were like uh, cobble cute. You were mission pretty. 
you know, it's like, and you know, you just wear anything there, like, you know, a burlap sack and, and would, it, you know, because there were so few Western women over there compared to the amount of Western men over there. Um, although, you know, it's kind of like Alaska, you know, the odds were good, but the goods were odd. <laughs>